Sophie Eccleston is one of the best bowlers in the world. Like, that's fairly obvious at this point. But weirdly enough, despite her number one ICC ranking, she is not that great in the power play. I would even go as far as to say she should probably not even bowl there. And I found this, of course, when I was looking at the data for the best T20 bowlers in the world by period of T20 matches. As we said in the video about the batting, our data is limited by the amount of matches they play and how hard it is to actually find the information. But even so, we have more than enough information to find some pretty interesting patterns. And there are some naughty records in all of this. As you may have noticed in the previous video, power play batting is not a strong point for the women. And there are many reasons for that. But the bowlers are certainly cashing in on it. There aren't many high usage bowlers without really good numbers here. The Australians and Indians particularly have a lot of good options. The Aussies have Ashley Gardner spin and Darcy Brown seam, while India have some really good spin from Deepthi Sharma and some excellent seam from Raykunar Singh. That's almost essentially four of the best six or seven bowlers out there, and it's a lot of flexibility for those teams as well. But a special shout out for Susie Bates, who is absolutely great as a low usage power play grifter. I was not expecting to see her here at all. But as she always has, she finds a way to get the job done, even with her dirty part-time medium pace. She's overachieving. Of the defensive bowlers, I want to point out two of the outliers here. The first is Sophie Eccleston, who, as I said before, has an abnormally high average in the power play. I just wouldn't bowl her here. Either having fielders in bowls her, or she doesn't like the new ball. And she is so good in the rest of the game, this is a waste. And also remember, Gardner was all the way up here. And no one would think that she's a better bowler than Eccleston. Although she's obviously pretty good herself. Gardner's numbers are just plainly wrong in the best way possible. Or Eccleston's are wrong in the worst way. Then we have Megan Shute, who is very similar to someone like Boovy Kumar. My guess is she is so good that teams have just stopped trying to score off her in dangerous ways. So her economy is incredible. But she doesn't take the wickets because of it. In the attackers, Kate Cross is the most interesting here. She takes wickets at a freaky level, even less than Gardner. And her plan is pretty simple. She bowls what she has admitted to me are unintentional wobble balls at the top of off or middle stump, a bit from an angle. And look at this. It seems like she gets a wicket about every 12 balls. And of course, we get to Marazan Cap. She averages less than 20 while going at under five runs a ball. Considering she can bat, these numbers are really quite disgusting and she should be forced to apologize for them. Remember that the batters get a lot better in the middle for the women and you can really see this in the bowlers figures as well. That's more in run rate though. There are still plenty of wickets being taken and it's worth talking about the leg swing because in the women's game, it's taken a little bit longer for that boom to happen that we saw in the men's. Rumina Ahmed is huge for Bangladesh. In 82 matches, she has a bowling average under 20 and economy under a run of ball. And she's been around for a long time, but I'd say she's in an even better form over the last couple of years. And she's been a huge reason in the rise of Bangladesh cricket. Australia have two leg spinners because they have kind of two of everything. Amanda Jade Wellington and Alana King. They need to be talked about together because between them, they have 100 wickets in the middle. That is more than the next three bowlers combined. Wellington is good against lefties and is a very good option. But King is, well, the queen. She's incredible on econ and average. Of course, now let's just mention Sophie Eccleston, just to mention how good she is, and also that this is the time for her to bowl and not that pesky power play. I hate to mention Radha Yadda, but for someone with a good career record, her last couple of years have not quite been ideal in the middle. This is a staggeringly bad record. You're gonna be surprised that when Marazan Cap is used here, she is still great. Megan shoots suddenly becomes a wicket taker in the middle, but with a surprisingly high economy. There's a couple more tasty spinners up here too. Snay Rana outshines Deepthi Sharma when it comes to the middle. She's a very good defensive bowler. Which, to be fair, Deepthi also is. But Nita Dar, who is also pretty good in the middle with the bat, does some excellent work with the ball. She's essentially holding Pakistan's collective middles together. She really has been a fantastic cricketer for them over the last couple of years. And now shall we move on to the death? One thing worth noting here is that there is a group of bowlers with averages that seem made up. Some of this is clearly because of small sample size. But in truth, you can see there is a huge difference from this group at the top from the rest. And now, let's put some respect on Radha Yadav's name. She may still struggle in the middle, but she certainly comes on well at the end. You can also see her near Eccleston, just proving what I said before, that there is no need for her to ever bowl in the power play. I love that Catherine Brunt is still a star here. All these years later, and she is still too angry to let anyone score on her. I haven't seen that much of Hayley Jensen from New Zealand, but this is a very good record at the death. But let's be honest, it's absolutely nothing compared to Jess Johnson. She has the most wickets in this period while averaging seven also going at that many runs and over and that's not even mentioning what an absolute freak she needs to be to be a frontline spinner at the death so often and still have these numbers this isn't a case of her just bowling it when the pitch is spinning i have watched her bowl a lot and i've tried to work out exactly what makes her so good and i'm still not sure i've got it completely nailed down but she is just so clever accurate and composed and the left arm certainly helps and she uses the angle from over and around the wicket to different batters but essentially as much as anything i'm not sure there's a lot of mystery there 
She just makes very smart bowling choices. And of course she does that old fashioned thing of if you miss, she hits. 